So like what, what suggestions would you have for people on sourcing their own validation? Mm, that's a really good question. Well, what do you like about yourself? You know, I mean, really. And if you don't know that, what do you typically get complimented on? You know, what are the things that people say about you over and over again? Because they're likely true. <laughs> And it's like, can you start to say that yourself? Like, wow, I, I kind of am a good person. Even if at first you might be like, oh my God, that's arrogant. You know, you might, you might have that, that back and forth, but it, it kind of takes practice of, of saying, I'm okay, I'm enough, you know? And is, can, that, can you allow that voice to grow? Because that's, I think, where the practice is. Because for a codependent, that's gonna sound arrogant mm -hmm. at first. And, to, and that's where having a group and a tribe is going to really help. Because even if you say, you know, Michelle, I'm never doing Al-Anon. I hate 12 step. I had a bad experience. Great. Form your own group. People can form their own women's group or men's group with these issues. As long as you have other people to go to, because they're going to be able to validate your self-esteem too and say, no, you know what? You really, you didn't mess up there. You tried your best, you know, you're learning and they're going to help you put it in perspective versus I, I just can't stop beating myself up, mm -hmm. you know, mm, beautiful that's why thing. other people are so important. You know, we need this tribe. <laughs> right. Even though right now in our world, it's being around others is not as easy as it once was. I know. Um, we will hopefully obviously get over that at some point. <laughs> right. Right. Well, um, thank God for zoom. Right. There you go. We can't, you can feel really connected with people on obviously yeah. would prefer in person, but yeah, there is a, there is a power to, to right. online platform and, and how we can connect for sure. So another thing you talked about, uh, Michelle, a couple of minutes ago was being addicted to chaos. You mentioned mm -hmm. that and, mm -hmm. I can totally relate to that. I'm sure a lot of people mm -hmm. can in their lives. And if, whether there's chaos or not, they like maybe want to create it because that's what feels normal. Um, yeah. Any suggestions yeah. on that? Cause that one I know plagues so many people like that constantly mm -hmm. looking for something to be wrong. And if it's not wrong, well, right. it must be coming. Right. Because that's right. maybe how we right. were raised or whatever. So thoughts on that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of like with every other issue, we have to get to the point where we're sick and tired of doing it. Because if we're still feeding off the chaos and we don't see anything wrong with it, we're going to keep going, right? Mm -hmm. But eventually we're going to do it enough times where we're going to hit a wall and go, man, I can't do this anymore. I am so tired. So that's the point of change. We have to get to the point of being sick and tired of our behavior. Because otherwise, you know, I'm not going to wake up one day and go, well, this this behavior is a little bit of an issue. I'll, I'll, I think I'll look at it. No, I wait until it hurts. <laughs> and then it, and then it gets my attention. So with chaos, it's, it's kind of like, can you s learn to sit still? And for a codependent, that's really hard, but that might be the practice. Can you sit for five minutes and read an inspirational book? You know, can you be with people that, you know, love you without stirring things up? Mm, yeah. You know, can you avoid those hot topics at family gatherings or let the silence be there and not have to fill in the space? Now that's going to be nerve wracking, right? Because those are new behaviors. But eventually you're going to get to the point where, oh God, it feels good. It feels good to slow down. Like I used to race around my house. I mean, <laughs> in my 20s, trying to do all these things. And I, I would have all this anxiety. Until I finally realized in my 30s, you know what? This doesn't feel good anymore. I've got to slow down. But it took me 10 years of recovery to get to that point where I saw it as a problem. Mm. And there's no judgment with that. You get to look at your issues when you're ready to look at your issues. That's why, you know, I think recovery is kind of like a diet. It, if you don't do the work, you're going to go backwards. Right. I can't do five years of recovery work and then leave and go, okay, I'm done because those behaviors are going to creep back in without those reminders and those practices that I've built up. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people can actually like overcome codependency a hundred percent or is it always with us? What do you think? I think they can do it to the point where they can be happy, joyous and free. I do think that. I don't think 
we can get to the point where they're a hundred percent gone, where there's like no trace at all. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen that, but I think it can be so minimal that instead of having a hundred percent codependent behavior, I think you can get down to like maybe, you know, 30, 20, a reasonable rate where once in a while they rear their ugly head, but you know what to do Mm -hmm. and you don't stay in it as long. Right. And you learn the lesson quicker because otherwise why stay in recovery? Right. We'd be done. (laughs) Right. And we'd be like, Oh, I'm fixed. Yeah. All taken care of. (laughs) That's right. And life tends to kick us in the teeth sometimes. So we all always have those reminders of, Oh yeah, maybe there's a little bit more work to do, but that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. That just means that's being human. 